So Mexico with the early gold cup. So Mexico with the early gold cup upset in the group stage. And Argentina looking to secure their spot moving into the next round. Guys, let's go through our day. Let's go to our day seven recap, guys. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like, comment, subscribe, all the buttons, notifications, everything if you like this sort of content. Also, before we get to the CONCACAF stuff, shout out to Nigeria Super Falcons who have moved on to the final stage of the CAF's Olympic qualifiers beating Cameroon 1-0 yesterday. But let's go to CONCACAF here. <clears throat> First game of the day in the CONCACAF Gold Cup W, you had Argentina taking it over Dominican Republic 3 0. Ipolito, Dos Santos, and Pereira getting with the goals in the 30th, 76th, and the 94th minute. And you kind of did see the levels of both sides. On Argentina's side, you saw pure dominance of the ball, movement, and great opportunities, great saves by Paloma Pena. I think she'll be a good one, but I think she'll only go as far as this Dom Reb team goes in front of her. And for Dom Reb, it was interesting because you saw opportunities. You saw the build-up coming, but then the passes weren't there to truly spring. You saw the ideas. <laughs> in the simplest way to put it is the idea was there, but the execution lacked any sort of conviction. And because of that, you had a game where it was just 3-0, dominated primarily by Argentina, who right now are in a good spot and feel good enough spot that they should be able to move through. They're sitting with four points right now, with a win, a draw, and a loss. Mexico and the U.S. are in. But let's talk about Mexico and the U.S. So, the best shocking result so far is Mexico taking it over the United States by a score of 2-0. I'm fighting the urge to go to the Dos Azeros, but it's there. What a game, I think, by Mexico by really turning up two mistakes. I think if you look at both goals that Mexico scored, you see they were doing a good job of catching uh, Nair off her line. Um, both goals, they got wonderful shots, wonderful volleys, but the first one, Nair, you know, it's a Back pass, Ooh, it's a ball that's sent in, and the defender tries to pass it back to the goalkeeper, but doesn't get enough on it. it bounces, ricochets off the Mexican player, and from there, it's just a battle of where do you put the ball on frame, and they're able to do so. That's the first goal that goes through. <clears> oh, <throat> Valley in the 30th minute. Then the second goal. Not from that point on, what makes this game interesting is the reality where. You have, you now we continue on this game, but you start to see in the trends again, now looking at the stats again at Google, you're looking at two shots on target for the U.S. versus four on target for Mexico. And I think that's the story of the game. Though possession is in the U.S. standpoint, Mexico was making the most of their chances, whether they were in that counterattacking or whether they were just making the game a little bit more uncomfortable and tough, but they still gave up chances. Ultimately, the U.S. held scoreless for the first time in who knows how long. On CONCACAF soil, that is. And Mexico's women's team earns probably their biggest victory. Um, you know, some may point out, yeah, they beat Canada at the end of uh, 2022. And maybe that was a bigger victory, but I think this is definitely the bigger victory. You can kind of see some of the commentators are really trying to make this the the U.S. and Mexico on the men's side happen on the U.S. Mexico women's side. Um, there's, there's there's better teams on the women's side. I think Jamaica would give the U.S. a better run. I think not the better run. I think the U.S. would. I mean, the, I think Jamaica, Haiti, Canada are all sides that can trouble the U.S. But this is the first time we just saw them just beat. Now I'm not going to overreact to this because ultimately, it it is the game, but it does now change. The seedings. Because many people expected the U.S. to win that and go through. Now, as it stands, the seedings are now only one group has played three games. You have Mexico in first with seven points. Goal difference of ten. Canada in second. Six points. Goal difference of ten. The USA, 
third, seven, or six points goal difference of seven, and Brazil goal difference of two, but then six points. Now with Brazil on the board today playing Panama and Colombia playing Puerto Rico, it is not inconceivable to say that he now the U.S. could find themselves pushed down to fourth, possibly even fifth place, which means they would have to play a team either, because just forecasting, if we're going to forecast, I don't think a team, I don't think Paraguay will win by so much over El Salvador of the push down. I think El Salvador will, I think they'll get their first goal against Paraguay here. So that will affect the goal difference and whatnot. But with Brazil sitting on six points, I think they end up at nine, which means that pushes the U.S. down to fourth. And then Colombia with a win over, yeah, Colombia with a win over Puerto Rico. I think it'll be a tight one. That could push them down to fifth. But that means you have Colombia and the U.S. in the 4-5 round. And if that's the case, that becomes very interesting. And if Canada is able to top their group and win their group, all they need really is a draw to do so. But a draw guarantees them a number one seed. That means they'll be playing possibly the winner of Colombia, U.S. in the semis, which is, that's tasty. But then that also gives them a third place team, which right now is either Argentina or Puerto Rico, which both sides will be very uh both will be interesting to go through what Paraguay is right there. So guys, we're gonna wrap it up here. Let me know. Is this Mexico's defining moment on the women's side? I don't think so. I think they need to stack some more uh, victories together. But it's a nice shot for those who've been saying for a long time this Mexican team has talent. And for me, this is good to see because for a while now, it feels like when it comes to major tournaments, they just aren't able to perform to their highest abilities for whatever reason. But you guys let me know what you think. We'll wrap it up here, guys, and say bye-bye for now.